Welcome and uh, hello DevOps, it's great to be here. My name is Ivo Grimstad, I'm the Jakarta Developer Advocate at Eclipse Foundation. And uh, today I'll be talking about the Jakarta E core profile and uh, also uh, look at what's coming in Jakarta E 10, which core profile is a part of. Uh, this is my contact information. You can uh, feel free to contact me on Twitter or LinkedIn or GitHub if you have any, anything you want to know about Jakarta E or Eclipse Foundation or ever, anything going on there. I'm involved in a bunch of open source community. I'm uh, the representative from Eclipse Foundation in the uh, Java Community Process Executive Committee. Uh, as well, I'm, I'm also actually a committer at Apache NetBeans and I run a uh, local Java user group in Malmö in Sweden. And obviously I'm uh, involved in Jakarta EE. So b before I start talking about Jakarta EE 10 and Core Profile, I'll start by uh, introducing or j just recapping a little bit about what uh, is going on with Jakarta EE 9. And um, Jakarta EE 9, uh, came out last year, and uh, we, we, a little bit after, we uh, produced a 9.1 release, which is something new. We have never done a dot release in, in Java EE or Jakarta EE before. But the reason we did that was to add Java SE support for uh, Java S11. And, and with that, we mean that you can certify a product on Java SE11. Obviously, you can run most Java e applications uh, on, on any Java version, but uh, this was specifically to, to make the vendors able to certify the products on 11. And there were three focus areas of, of 9 and 9 of 1. And, and the first one was to uh, lower the entry barriers. We want to have new players on the market. We want to see new uh, vendors certifying their products. And uh, to make it easier, we removed things that weren't that much used uh, any longer, so, such as some, some old specs that weren't uh, evolving around SOAP and, uh, and XML RPC and that kind of thing. So we kind of just took it away. It's still there, so you can use it, and some of the vendors implement it, but it's not part of the platform anymore. We wanted to establish every process and everything, so, we, so Jakarta EE is seen as a platform for innovation and, and kind of uh, streamline everything and make it easy to propose new uh, specifications and get going there. And I think we've succeeded in that. We're seeing a couple of new specifications being proposed uh, right now. And the last item was to make the migration easy. And with the migration, uh, I mean, what we kind of did to complicate this was uh, to have this namespace change from JavaX to Jakarta. And, and we wanted to make that migration as easy as possible. So uh, we didn't want to add uh, too much other functionality. Uh, so, so the packages uh, were the same. So the migration from the namespaces were uh, pretty, pretty straightforward to do. And I'll talk a little bit more about this namespace. And the, the first question is, why should I care about this namespace? What, what if I'm a, a Spring developer, or, or I'm not using Jakarta EE at all. Wh why should I care about this namespace? Because it, it, it is actually uh, influencing a lot of the industry around here. And if you noticed earlier this uh, year, the blog post of the Spring team said that Spring 6 will be based on Java 17 and Jakarta EE 9. So, 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 so you see that they are uh, and, and, and that will be available in the uh, end of next year. So, so you, you may not be aware of it, but Spring is, is very dependent on the Jakarta E specifications. And some of them are used directly in, in the Spring applications, such as uh, Bean Validation and, and Persistence, for example. You probably use the, uh, the JavaX namespaces directly. So, so that will also affect your applications, even though they're based on Spring Framework. And, and, and the work is progressing. Yeah, it, this one says it, uh, it, it's four days ago, but that was when I took the screenshots. It, it's longer than four days ago. So, so they've done this change, and you can see there are lots of changes in this Jakarta E9 migration in the Spring Framework. Uh, so, so if they can do it, you can do it. And, and it's not only Spring. If you're using Jetty or Tomcat or Hibernate, uh, to, to name a few, 
uh, they're already moved on to the Jakarta namespace. So if you want to stay on the latest version of Jetty, for example, you have to change the namespace in your applications because they are supporting the Jakarta namespace going forward. The same as with uh, Tomcat 10 and newer. And Hibernate also announced uh, that they have a version on the Jakarta namespace. So that's where we're going, uh, and it's kind of this little hurdle uh, we have to get over and then yeah, get moving. So that was nine, and nine of one. So, so, look at, so let's look at what's coming after nine of one, and after nine is 10. And uh, we have a preliminary target release date for uh, Jakarta E10 to be uh, coming in, in Q1 next year. And that, that is just a couple of months away now. And, and we're currently, uh, it, it, this is a, a, a kind of a visualization of the Jakarta specification process. And we're currently in the development and milestone phase uh, of the specifications. And we've sort of uh, uh, moved over to the release review phase that we said that uh, we would be uh, interested in release reviews from the specifications from October 15, that's a couple of weeks ago now, and uh, forward going until uh, around December 15. And, and that is uh, de de December 15. So, so, uh, and, and that is because we need those uh, couple of months after December until uh, like the end of March to be able to, to um, fit everything together and make sure uh, it, it plays along and we can get a ratified final specification of the platform, the full profile, and the core profile, which we will look at uh, in this talk. And, and you have, uh, may have noticed that f f from Java EE8 until Jakarta EE9, uh, there weren't any updates or any m major updates to any of the specifications. So, so now we're finally seeing uh, them moving ar uh, around. And these are the specifications that have filed plan reviews for uh, Jakarta E10, uh, the Jakarta E10 platform. And you can see all the blue ones are the ones that are updated. And uh, the gray ones are the ones that uh, have signaled that they're not doing anything for this release. And, and you can see the, 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 the ones with a dot zero, they are major updates from the previous version. And the dot one releases are a uh, a minor updates, and we're trying to do semantic versioning on the specification levels. So you can see there are there are about half and half with uh, uh, major updates and uh, and minor updates, uh, and uh, a lot of the specifications are are doing things for this release. And there are a couple of new ones down in the corner, which I'll uh, explain later. If we take away the the, the more enterprise-y uh, kind of uh, specifications and just focus on uh, these, uh, that will be how the Jakarta web profile will look like. So, so web profile is a subset of the platform. This is lying a little bit, this picture, because config and CDI Lite will not be a part of the web profile. They will be a part of the core profile, but it was easier to create this animation by including them here. So, so you kind of see where I'm going with this. If I, if I remove the web versions of the specifications, those that are targeting web applications, uh, uh, like JSF or, or, or servlet and that kind of stuff, uh, we're left with uh, a stack of specifications that are suited for creating uh, headless applications or microservices. And, and these are uh, the specifications that are planned to be a part of the Jakarta 10 core profile. And uh, let's uh, look at these uh, in, in detail. And uh, uh, the, the focus of the core profile is to have a, uh, a, a possibility for vendors to target smaller runtimes and be able to certify on Jakarta EE. And that opens up for possible products such as the Heladon, Quarkus, or Micronaut, for example, to, to be potentially Jakarta EE compatible. And, and this is not possible for them today because the web profile is a little bit too big and they are focusing on the microservice aspect of, of, the, of the applications. So let's look at the specifications included uh, and, and what they're doing for core profile. And, and these will also be a part of the, the web profile and the platform, these updates, uh, except for uh, CDR Lite and, and Config. 
So Jakarta RESTful uh, Web Services, or Jakarta REST for short, uh, 3.1, will update their APIs, and uh, it it's, uh, mostly features requested by the community, and they will be backwards compatible. You can find more uh, on their specification page on uh, Jakarta EE slash specifications slash RESTful uh, WS. You can find every Jakarta EE specification under Jakarta EE slash specifications, and, and there's a list of them, and you can go in and, and look at every version and find uh, all you need to know about these projects. Uh, the the uh, uh, REST project will uh, create a Java SE Bootstrap API, which means that you can uh, have a uh, RESTful application you can bootstrap from uh, Java SE without running it in a container such as uh, Jersey, for example. And uh, that uh, uh, you can, uh, the application here uh, that I'm, I'm saying, new my application, that will be your uh, usual Jakarta REST uh, application class. So, so, so it's, uh, you, can, you can use the same code uh, deploying to Jersey or running it in, in Java SE directly. Another thing they're adding is multi-platform uh, multi data support. So, so uh, you, you can define the, the, the uh, media type you're producing and, and just uh, return the, the, the parts uh, as different, uh, with different media types or different content, if you, are, if you like, and, and they will be handled like multi-platform data. This is already supported in most of the implementations, but this is a portable standardized way of doing it. Let's look at uh, uh, JSON processing. And Jakarta JSON processing uh, will come with a minor update and mostly features uh, that uh, the uh, community request. And they also are creating a standalone API jar. And, and uh, the reason why they're kind of focusing on this now is because uh, the, the implementation or the reference implementation of JSONP used to be a part of the same code base. So they've split it out and created the Eclipse Parson project, which will be a JSON parser uh, or, or implementing uh, JSON processing. And uh, so they, they spent some time uh, creating this project, uh, splitting out the implementation from the specification. And the uh, issues or, or uh, features they're adding for uh, two to one you can find on the uh, their issue tracker. And all these uh, links are available from Jakarta EE slash specifications. For JSON binding, uh, it's also a two to one. They are uh, actually saying that it may be a three to one that they will introduce some backwards incompatible changes. So they, they haven't yet produced a plan review for that, but uh, there may be something coming there uh, very soon. And they also uh, add features uh, requested by the community, uh, such as uh, a deserialization of null, which is probably something that should have been there from the beginning, uh, and some other uh, goodies here and there to uh, make life easier for the developers using the API. And then we have annotations. And uh, annotations weren't actually supposed to do anything now, but they uh, came up with a plan uh, in, in the end because CDI Lite needed something uh, from them. So, so it's kind of uh, provide features requested by the community and other specifications. And um, what they're adding is to allow to use at priority everywhere in, in your applications, and also uh, add uh, uh, annotations for at nullable and at null, so it's available throughout the platform. The uh, interceptors and dependency injections are not doing anything for this release. They are stable as they are. And, and now we're coming into the uh, newer stuff. And CDI Lite 4.0 is a new specification. It's a subset of CDI 4.0. And CDI Lite uh, will uh, be designed so it can work, so CDI can work in more restricted environments. And with more restricted environments, we mean that we want to have uh, the, the uh, remove the dynamics of CDI, or not remove, but kind of have that in the, in the CDI full profile, and uh, uh, create a new extensions API, uh, so, so you still can have portable extensions, but not in the, in the old way that the extensions were read at runtime when you started your application, but you can figure it out at, or the compiler can figure it out for you at the uh, com compile time, so you can kind of do the dynamic stuff at build time 
and produce uh, native images uh, using uh, technologies like uh, GraalVM. So this is kind of the key of Core Profile. We're also adding a new specification called config. Uh, I have a little star there because there is a possibility that Core Profile will be released without config. It depends on, on if, uh, uh, con uh, whether config makes it in time for Core Profile or not. But uh, what a Jakarta config will uh, do is to uh, uh, enable portable configuration from environment of our sources. That means that you can have your, your application uh, configured depending on which environment uh, it, it's deployed into, uh, and you don't have to re uh, recompile it or rebuild it uh, when you change the configurations. And, and this is exactly the way as MicroProfile config works today. And uh, it is expected that uh, the, the, the most of the features in MicroProfile config will be uh, uh, replicated here, or it will uh, microprof config will be used as a basis for this. They will do some tweaks here and there to make it more suitable for Jakarta environments. Uh, but it's uh, it's expected that microprof config, if you're familiar with that, uh, you you will uh, be very much familiar with um, Jakarta config as well. We're simplifying it a little, removing a little bit of things that uh, aren't really. Uh, needed in Jakarta applications, and also introducing, uh, for example, tree structure for for uh, configuration parameters. So, so it's more flexible. It's it's a little lighter, it's, uh, easier. So, but uh, it will be very much like uh, microprofile config. Okay, I hadn't thought to take this one, but uh, let's do it anyway. Jakarta security is not a part of Core Profile. But Jakarta Security will add uh, features as well. And these are also things uh, uh, that uh, are requested by the community. So, so now we're, we're, we're not talking Core Profile anymore. We're talking uh, Jakarta uh, Web Profile and uh, uh, Platform. And uh, uh, we will start uh, continue adding features because G uh, Security 1.0 kind of was the foundation for security. Uh, and, and to the, the, the kind of the application manage uh, security in Jakarta applications. And the plan now is to add support for OpenID Connect and OAuth 2, as well as making it possible to use um, more uh, uh, authentication mechanisms to, to, for example, have a web UI using one uh, mechanism and another part of the application using another authentication me mechanism and all configured within the application. So, so it's uh, uh, very much easier. So it's, it's kind of the... Uh, the stuff that uh, any developers that are securing their application, which is everybody, will uh, be pretty happy about uh, getting. So other stuff we're doing in 10. And, and this is uh, probably one of the, the, the more important, if you're looking ahead, is that we're, we're, we're aligning a little bit how to handle the Java SE versions. And with 10, we're saying that the API source level will be Java SE 11. So, so the APIs will, will be compiled using 11. And they will use language features up until 11. The, the, uh, the, they will be compiled. So the binaries produced are on Java SE 11. That means you, you have to use SE 11 if you want to use these APIs. No, if a project or a specification project wants to support Java SE 8, and some of them do, uh, then uh, they will pr uh, fix that by either producing uh, separate jars for separate versions or using uh, multi-version uh, jars. But um, uh, the, the Java SE 11, uh, Java SE level is 11 for Jakari 10. And, and then the interesting thing is that we will make sure that the TCK runs with anything from 11 and above. And that means that, that you're probably, but we're, we're still, we were already at 17. We want 17 features. And yes, you can, you can use 17 features as an application developers. Just make sure that the runtime you're choosing, whether it's, for, uh, it's Open Liberty or Wildfly or Payara or uh, whatever, just make sure that this one has been uh, verified to work with 17. And we're making that possible. Uh, and we will 
most likely ensure that the TCK runs on 11 and 17, and anything in between there, well, somebody will s probably do it, but um, uh, the important thing is probably 11 and 17. And, and this kind of sets the, the, the pace going forward, so, so we'll probably, on the next major version of Jakarta E, we will set the API levels to 17, so then we can use features like records I in the APIs. But it will be kind of bold today to start using records in an API before we know how to use records. So now we have a little time with, with 10 to, to figure out how is the best practice of doing this and get it all kind of uh, out in, in the APIs and then start using it and, and uh, supporting uh, 17 features on API level from next version. But we as developers, we can use 17. And that brings us over to a demo. And I, I was hoping today to be able to demo uh, Core Profile, but uh, due to uh, there are no implementations yet, uh, and, and they haven't really defined any uh, things on Core Profile uh, that are demo uh, uh, possible to demo yet. So what I will do is is I'll, I'll give you a teaser to how to, how to do the, the nations migration. So I've taken an, an, uh, an uh, Jakarta 8 application running on Glassfish 5 and port it over to uh, Jakarta 9 on, uh, on Glassfish 6.2. Uh, and then I'll, I'll throw in some uh, Java 17 and, and show how you, how you can use that with uh, Jakarta 9 already. And the application I'm using is a uh, it, it is a Hello World application, and of course, uh, Hello World can be done in many ways. And uh, since uh, I'm a Java developer and I'm, I'm a Jakarta EA developer, I'm using a, a tiered approach here. So I'm, I, I'm storing the messages in the database. I'm using Jakarta Persistence to, to get the, the message from there. And I have my, my business logic in a Jakarta Enterprise being in, in between there, and using Jakarta REST to produce uh, a JSON that is uh, produced by a Jakarta JSON binding. And also threw in a CDI extension over there uh, to give a nice log message to the uh, sysadmin that are deploying the application. So, so this is my, my simple uh, Hello World uh, application. And uh, we, we can uh, j just quickly go and uh, look at the code and, and verify that it runs on, on Glassfish 5 and then I'll I'll, I'll go through some steps, uh, what we have to do for the migration. So I, I hope you can see this. Uh, the application is, uh, this is the, the uh, Jakarta REST application. It, it, it doesn't have any configuration other than the application part, path, which is empty. Uh, and uh, what I have here is a uh, resource. And, and uh, also notice this is uh, uh, Jakarta E8. I, I'm, I'm using version 8 there. Uh, I'm also using uh, Java SE8. So, so uh, th this is the, the Hello resource. Uh, resource. It uh, uses the uh, Duke service to find a greeting, and it produces a JSON for me. And this uh, uh, final greeting, the logic here is that I'm, I'm, I'm uh, calling the repository and find everything, take the first, if there are none, uh, hard code a message. And the, uh, the uh, uh, repository uh, is using the uh, Jakarta persistence criteria language to do a, a simple select, select all from the database. So this is my entire application. Uh, also uh, mentioned the CDI extension, and, and in, in, in the resource class, I have this at Duke's annotation where I say uh, hi there. And, and this annotation is, is just a simple annotation I've uh, defined myself. And I have this extension that is uh, uh, looking at this uh, while deploying and producing this message in the log. So, so it, it, it's, it's a complicated hello, hello world, but it's a very simple application. But it kind of touches a lot of uh, aspects uh, and, and what you have to think of when doing the migration. So th there are several ways I can do this. And, and one of them is transformation. So, so if, I, if, I, if, if I just 
don't have the source code, code or don't want to do it on source level, I can take the binaries or the WAR file or the ear file or jar files and transform them using a couple of tools. Uh, there is one tool called the Eclipse Transformer, and there's one tool called the Apache Tomcat Migration Tool. And both of these will take the binaries and just switch the namespace for you so you can deploy them directly in a Jakarta 9 server. And that's convenient if you have some libraries that you uh, uh, don't have control over, or if you just want to test how, how will it work. There are some things to remember here that it, they don't do everything. So depending on how your application is, if you have a lot of, of XML uh, definitions in your application, uh, the, uh, the uh, XML schemas can be a problem uh, because it doesn't change the namespaces for you. But it depends on which application server you're using. So it's kind of, you can try it, see if it does it, and, and uh, otherwise uh, just be aware of some. But there are open source, you can always um, uh, contribute some solutions to them. And there are IDE supports. And, and uh, uh, some of the IDEs have uh, the, the support you can, you can just uh, uh, sort of use the refactoring mechanism in the IDE and, and do a migration from, from Java to Jugari and it will do it for you. So it's just one click and it's done. And I'll, I'll actually demo this uh, afterwards. Or you can do everything uh, manually. And, and these are the things that you need to remember. So we'll go through all of these step by step. Uh, and uh, doing it in the code and, uh, and uh, go back to this list and, and check that we are remembering everything. But first of all, uh, what, what I want to do is to just take this application and deploy it to Glassfish 5. Uh, just to verify that it works. So, so, so we can see here, um, uh, you can see here, it, it, it writes a, a high message in the, uh, in, in the log file. So, so the CDI extension, everything works there. And uh, if we go here to the um, uh, Glassfish 5 uh, I have running and the complete Duke uh, hello, it says, uh, how did you call E8? So everything works. Uh, so, so we have kind of verified that, uh, uh, that before we start. So, so the, the first thing I have to do is to update the Jakari E version in the POM file. And then I have to fix the imports uh, statements there. And to do this, I'll use the... Uh, the tooling in the, um, uh, in the IDE. So the first thing I'll do is to go to the POM file. I'll take the, the uh, Jakari dependency here. I'll copy uh, the, the entire thing. Just put it underneath here. And then update the version from, from 8 to uh, 9.1. Like this. And, and then uh, uh, update the projects, uh, let the IDE uh, do its stuff. What I can do then is to go to refactor and migrate. Uh, I'm, I'm using IntelliJ here, uh, but the other ID probably also have some similar uh, support for this. And, and here I can, do, I can choose the complete Duke application and just do the, uh, the uh, migration for me. And when I do the refactor here, uh, you can see that all my classes uh, are, are now moved to the Jakarta namespace. So it's not harder than that. It's one click and then you're gone. But uh, as we saw here, there are some other things to fix. So we have taken step one and two now. And, and uh, uh, there are also the XML schema namespaces that some uh, servers are picky with, and Glassfish is one of them. So let's fix the uh, namespaces as well. And before I do that, I'll go here and just remove the uh, uh, Jakarta 8 dependency. We don't need that anymore. And then I'll, I'll see. Do I have any XML files there? Yes, and I do. I have this um, persistent XML. And you can see here, uh, it is the old uh, jcp.org uh, namespace. And these have to be changed to uh, uh, jakarta.ee. So, so we've done it easy. It, 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 everything else is uh, kept just the same. Uh, and we just have to uh, switch the uh, locations as well. And. That's the last one. So, so if you're using a lot of, of uh, XML, you have to change all of this. And uh, uh, also, every uh, XSD, the schemas, have a version in the file name. So you have to update the version as well. And, and now it will actually validate that, hey, you're using a, the wrong version here. 
So, so, so now I have validation and uh, that, that everything is uh, correct. And, and you can see the, it here that I'm, I'm using some, some properties here to, to load the database with some uh, data. That uh, here uh, I get uh, code completion since I have the namespace. So, so, so what I want to have here is the Jakarta persistent schema generation and the same here. So, so, so it, it is, the namespace is changed from jcb.org to jakarta.ee and uh, the properties are uh, Jakarta rather than uh, JavaX properties. So that, that was the, the step four as well. So, so now we did these uh, XML schema namespaces and then we did rename the pro properties that were prefixed with uh, JavaX. Then I have this uh, number five, bootstrapping files. And, and this is the uh, CDI extension we were uh, showing that printed the, the high there in, in the log. So, so uh, for CDI extensions, and, th and this is uh, one of the things, this is portable extensions, th this won't work with, with CDI Lite. So this is kind of the stuff they're removing. So, but there will be an extension API so I can do this uh, and, and have it at compile time anyway. But, but here, this file uh, where, where I have the, the uh, fully qualified e extension uh, class name there it is in a file called Java X Enterprise Inject B extension. So, so this file has to be uh, renamed to, yeah, you probably guessed it, guessed it. it's, it's uh, Jakarta rather than Java X. So at, at least we were consistent. So, so the file has been renamed to Jakarta, and now we're ready to uh, run the uh, application and deploy it to, to the uh, Glassfish 6. So let's do that. And I have uh, six uh, running here. So I'll just uh, select the complete duke, add it. There you go. And then I'll uh, deploy it. And uh, what we uh, need to check for is that the, the uh, hi there message is uh, coming in the log. So, so we know that the CDI extension is working. And it's warming up. I, I have an, an, a new Mac coming next week, so then it will, uh, the demos will be faster. But here you can see we have the hi there in, in the logs. So the, the, the extension was picked up and everything works. So let's go and, and look in Glassfish 6.2 and, and uh, poke the endpoint and you can see the message works. But there is one thing here. It, it says, how did you call E8? So what was the last step I was mentioning? Verify data and dynamic content. Because it could be that you're concatenating strings to create some Java X named properties or concatenating some class names and you do use, using reflection. And you won't see that with the, the, the IntelliJ tooling to, to do the namespace won't fix that. Or, or when you look at the code, search and replace won't fix that. If you're dynamically building strings and then doing it uh, uh, by reflection or something. And this is, database, this is the content, the message saying how the hell, uh, Jakarta 8 comes from the database. So I actually need to check the database for all this stuff as well. So uh, uh, let me just open the, the database and open a, a query console here. Let me see here. Where do I have a new query console? There you go. And then I can say select from greeting. And just run this. And you can see it says, uh, how did you call E8? So let's change this one and say 9 of 1. There you go. And commit it. And, and now we've fixed the dynamic content. So now the message is correct. So, so this is all the steps needed for doing a, um, a conversion uh, from the JavaX uh, to a Jakarta 9 uh, compatible server on the, the Jakarta namespace. But I also promised we should look at some Java 17 features. So let's do that. And for, first of all, uh, uh, I'm going to update the, the POM file. So let's get rid of the database stuff. So I'm, I'm using uh, one update here. So uh, w what I want to do is to, uh, no, not that. There we go. Sorry. 
comment out the, the uh, 108 and, and upgrade to 17. And uh, now I can use the uh, Maven compiler release rather than, uh, than the, um, uh, the source and target since I'm, I'm above 9. So, so, so I've, I've fixed the uh, configuration. It's on 17. Uh, and uh, an another uh, thing I, I just want to do is remember from my persistent file that I'm loading the database. I don't want it to uh, insert E, uh, Howdy, Jakarta E8 again. So, so I'll just comment out these uh, to, to uh, insert the uh, test data. So, so, so the database will be intact. Uh, and you notice here in my resource here, wh what, what I'm doing is to return the Duke's greeting directly. And, and JSON B is converting this one to, to uh, the JSON output. And a Duke's greeting is uh, my entity. That's my database object. And you probably don't want to expose your database objects through the JSON API, right? So, so what we're going to do here is to, to uh, add a, um, a, a, uh, a DTO or value object or whatever you want to call it in between here. And to do that, um, I'll, I'll uh, be using a record. So I'll call this Duke's greeting record, just to, just to be super clear. And uh, uh, this record should have a string. Uh, I think it was a message, I call it there. So let's call it greeting. And, and also, I don't want to uh, put the email address out there. So let's do a local date. Uh, date. So, so, so I'm adding a, a greeting and, and a date uh, to expose out. And then I can update the, 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 the resource uh, by uh, not returning the Duke's greeting, but the uh, Duke's greeting record. Uh, then I uh, need to fix the, uh, the uh, find greeting method to also return a record. And the uh, repository, so this is my business logic. My repository contains the Duke's greetings. So what I have to do is to map this one uh, from, from a, a Duke's greeting to a... Um, New uh, Duke screening record, and uh, get the the message, and also I'll, I'll add the um, uh, local date now. So so uh, today's date, and the um, the the uh, the the case if it if it's not in default the fallback, it is also a record. You can say hi, but rather than undefine, I'll return local date of. Uh, uh, 20, 21, 9, 14. Wasn't that the release date of, no, not 2014, 14. That's the release date of 17, I think. Um, so, so now I've changed, so, so I'm returning a, a record through my APIs. So let's uh, deploy this one and, and um, see how it goes. Do you think it will work? Thumbs up there. All right, demos always work, yeah. But but the cool thing with demos is that you can you can you can fail miserably and then recover from it. So why doesn't it display anything here? Well, th the thing is that that 17 is not supported on API level, right? So you have to do a little trick. Uh, if, if you remember from from uh, uh, if I do a, a new Duke's uh, record here, and, and and just look at the the garrison setters, they're called date and greeting. And that's, the, that's how the records are generating things. And uh, JSON B is, is uh, working after the Java Beans model, right? So, so we need to have get date and get greeting for that to work. So, so a trick here is there are other ways of doing it, but if I just call the, uh, my properties get date and get greeting, then, then my, my uh, my, my uh, when it's here, you can see the the method will be get date and get reading. So so w when I deploy this one, uh, it will uh, be able to render it. Of course, you, you can use. I can't exactly remember what, but you you, you can use these kind of def definitions things in JSON B to 
to uh, go away from the Java Beans properties and, and just look at the, the method names, uh, and, and then it will work. But uh, this is a nice trick if you just want to have something quick and dirty. So here you can see Java 17 records exposed through a uh, uh, Jakarta um, 9 application on Glassfish 6. So, Java 17 works pr perfectly well with Jakarta E. So don't, don't, don't kind of get hung up on that we say that the I API levels will be 11, because you can use 17 as an app developer, and that's the important thing. You can use everything from 11 to 17 and, and still be uh, good to go. So, uh, and, and some of the uh, vendors are also supporting older versions, so you can use 8 and, and above. So to sum up, Jakarta E9 the, the delivered lower entry barriers to establish a platform for innovation and make the migration easy uh, from previous versions. And the platform for innovation, I think we've, we've seen that a lot of uh, new specs are coming up, or uh, specs are coming with, um, with uh, updates. There are uh, a couple of new specs coming in. Uh, among them, uh, a Jakarta gRPC spec is coming. So, so that has been uh, proposed, uh, and, and uh, will probably, uh, I think it's out for community review now. And uh, so that is something we will see probably in uh, Jakarta 11. The name Swiss change, it's here. Uh, we're sorry we had to do this, but uh, uh, when we did, uh, we, uh, in fact, uh, we kind of affected the entire in in industry. And uh, if you're using Java, you'll probably sooner or later get, get uh, familiar with uh, doing these migrations. Jakarta e, uh, platform is coming. It's coming in Q1 next year, hopefully. And uh, uh, as you see, there are lots of uh, new and updated specifications. The core profile uh, will uh, uh, be a, a slimmed down version for uh, headless clients. And actually, most of the stuff, uh, if you if you take away the database and the EJB from my demo application, then uh, the, uh, my demo application would actually run perfectly fine on, on core profile as well. Everything you, you, you want to know about Jakarta EE, you can find on jakarta.ee. Uh, and uh, from there, you can navigate to any project, any specifications. And the important page to remember there is the slash specifications. That's the list of all the specifications and you can find uh, everything you want there. We have this blog aggregator on Jakarta Blogs. It will be moved to Jakarta E uh, domain uh, eventually, but uh, currently it's, uh, it's on its separate domain. I have my weekly hashtag Jakarta E and some blogs in between there as well. On my blog, it's also aggregated to Jakarta Blogs and blogs at, at Eclipse. Uh, the demo code is on my GitHub. It's, uh, called Jakarta E Duke, just search for it, you should be able to find it. And there are some transformation examples and also uh, built up as a guide so you can step by step go through the migration I did here today. So with that, I thank you very much for listening. Uh, it's uh, great to be here and uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk. And if you have any questions, I know you're supposed to do it with the app and I probably will if there are any questions, get it on the app, but feel free to ask the questions anyway. Thank you. Yes? Sorry, what was the um, Spring version? The question? Did it start using it? So the question is, which Spring version will uh, be uh, based on the Jakarta namespace? And that is Spring 6. It's also is it Spring with 3 that is the next major version, yeah. Anybody else? Yes? Um, in, in the Spring world, uh, they added support for reactive Java, reactive databases, reactive controller, reactive all of this. Is there something like that in the Carter in Spring? Yeah. So the question is whether there will be a re reactive API or reactive support in Jakarta E. And uh, currently, there are not. Uh, I, I see that it, if the community wants to have it, if, the, if the, the vendors contributing wants to have it, then I don't see why it shouldn't be. Currently, there is some reactive support in MicroProfile, uh, 
So, so and MicroProfile works uh, with the, most of the uh, Jakarta EE implementations as well. So, so if you're yeah, if, if, if you're needing reactive uh, streams or, or reactive uh, support in the APIs, it, then uh, I'll look at those. Uh, working. Uh, if we got a question on Rocket, so I'm going to read it. Happy to see uh, the Jakarta IE moving forward. Uh, what is the uh, expected release cadence for uh, the project going to be after 10? Once a year, is it... Uh, Every two years. Okay, so so what the uh, expected release cadence is, um, I, we have delivered uh, a, approximately once a year since eight, uh, and uh, hopefully we will be able to do that in the future as well. But it depends on how many people contribute to the specifications and uh, how much uptake there, there are on the specification. And if there is interest, then uh, hopefully we could, we could look at a one or two yearly cadence, but we haven't defined anything. And, and since we've opened up the, the possibility for uh, dot releases, there could possibly be a dot release even more often if, if needed. And, and then a major version uh, a little bit uh, less frequently. Uh, what we also do with this uh, 10 release is that we open up for the individual parts of the uh, profile uh, or, or the, the platform, like the profiles, can be released individually. So, so uh, most likely we will release the, the platform and the web profile at the same time, as we've always done. And the core profile may be released a little bit later. And that is perfectly fine. That's kind of how we're tailoring the processes right now. Yes? Uh, am, I understanding, am I understanding this correctly that with the Carta EE 10, the groundwork is being laid for implementation of this spec to support to our VM? So the question is if the uh, with Jakarta EE 10, we're we're uh, laying the groundworks to uh, support GraalVM. Uh, well, it's, it's, it certainly is possible for implement implementers of core profile to c use uh, GraalVM to compile to native. So, so uh, uh, the, the new CDI Lite spec will enable that. Definitely, yes. One more. What is your expectation on when the first um, you know, GraalVM capable implementation will be out? It seems like the spec is about you know, four months away or five yeah. months. Um, so will it also take half a year until guys are done? Because you know, it seems yeah. like a lot of work to support that. So the question is when we can expect the first implementation of, of Core Profile that also can compile to native. And I think they will come faster than you think because there are already implementations out there doing that. You have Quarkus from Red Hat, and you have Halidon from, uh, from Oracle, to name two of them. And both of these are potential candidates for core profile. And, and, uh, and uh, I expect them to uh, be pretty fast out there. There has to be one compatible implementation when we launch this profile. And that compa uh, the compatible implementation of core profile will mo most likely not be Glassfish. So, so one of those compatible implementations that are used to ratify this application, the, this specification, will most likely also support compiled to native. So, so I'm expecting when core profile is released, we all was, uh, we're already there. Yes. No, no, so the question is whether Spring 6 will be an implementation of Core Profile. No, I don't expect that. Okay. No more questions? Okay. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you for the good questions, and uh, enjoy the rest of the show.